Holy Trinity School. Father Paul here again for our collective worship. It's been very cold. We've had lots of snow, more snow than we've had in Ramsgate, I think, for a long time. I wonder if you've been out sledging and enjoying it, perhaps snowball fights even, maybe even making a snowman. Well, Wednesday of next week is Ash Wednesday. And that's the beginning for us as Christians of a journey of 40 days called Lent. We're going to talk about that in a moment, but first we're going to start our worship as we always do by putting our three fingers together. And because we're Holy Trinity School, we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So what is this Lent all about? What is it about drawing closer to Jesus in these 40 days, these very holy special days, which lead us right up to the crucifixion of Jesus and ultimately to Easter Day, when we celebrate his rising from the dead? Well, I want you to look first at a picture which has got some explanation stuff about Lent. What is the meaning of the word Lent? Well, Lent comes from the German language, Lenkten, which means the spring season. And the days, of course, you will notice are lengthening because it's getting lighter at nights. It's getting lighter in the mornings. So it's a time of the spring season. And the Latin equivalent is this funny word quadragesima, a word that means 40 days. And of course, we know that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But we know as we look at nature, spring is a real time of change and renewal. New things are beginning to grow. There are buds coming on the trees. Snowdrops are pushing through the earth. It reminds us that winter is almost over and that life begins to grow again. For us as Christians, life is all about growing and about developing and traveling on a journey. So Lent is a kind of spiritual spring, a time for spiritual growth and renewal, even being closer to Jesus in our prayers and our thoughts and knowing and understanding what God wants for us. So what we traditionally hear on the first Sunday in the Lenten season is a story from the Gospels about how Jesus was tempted. The Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after 40 days and 40 nights without any food, Jesus was very hungry. The devil tempted Jesus to turn stones into lovely bread, to which Jesus replied, but human beings cannot simply live on bread alone, but they need to hear every word that God speaks. The second temptation was for Jesus to throw himself from the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem and then order his angels to catch him and save him. But Jesus replied to the devil, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then finally the devil offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in return for worshipping him. But Jesus replies, you must worship only the Lord your God and you must serve him only. The devil then left Jesus and we are told in the gospel that angels came to look after Jesus. This picture I like because you can see there's Jesus sitting in that wilderness place, in that desert, but there's a kind of strange shadow. Now we might want to use the word devil, but sometimes we all have that strange shadow within ourselves, do we not? That little voice that pops up into our head and says, go on, you can do it. Go on, nobody will see you. And that little voice in our head, maybe it's our conscience, sometimes keeps us on the straight and narrow, keeps us right. But sometimes that voice leads us astray and it tests us, it tempts us. 
So this time of 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was spending there in that wilderness. He was alone with himself, but he was alone with God too. But it tested him. It tempted him. And if you were really hungry, then those stones might just look like beautiful, freshly baked loaves of bread. When we want something and crave something, how appealing, how tempting it can be. But Jesus kept faith with God. He said, you don't put the Lord your God to the test. So we won't spend 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. But we are given this season, this holy season of Lent, to look at ourselves, to make some big decisions about who we are, what kind of life we're going to live. And there might be things that we have to get rid of. There might be things that we have to say no to. So sometimes in Lent, we give up sweets, chocolate. We give up perhaps having too much food, maybe watching too much television. These things we call self-denial. And so that if we give up things, we can take on more of Jesus and God in our thoughts. Now, if you look at the next picture, this always fascinates me because when I lived in California, Northern California, we had lots of rattlesnakes and snakes have always frightened me. But then I realised that the snake might actually be a good thing for us to think about on this Lenten season. A snake gets out of its old skin. The snake begins first of all by rubbing its head against something very hard until the skin splits open. Lent gives us some hard choices to make, whether we will indulge ourselves or whether we will give something up. Perhaps the harder that is, the more we will get rid of our old self. Secondly, the snake then ripples its muscles all down its body. The snake stretches the outer layer of its old skin and begins to wiggle out of it. What Lent asks us to do is to ripple the muscles of our souls by getting rid of all the stuff we don't need. Sin, greed, selfishness, all those things. And then... In the process, the outer layer of the skin is turned completely inside out and it's usually shed in one piece. Well, maybe we won't shed our wrongdoing or our selfishness in one fell swoop, but maybe in the process of getting rid of our outer layer, we can turn ourselves inside out, finding who we really are and giving ourselves to God in Lent. So, let us pray for the grace of Lent. You'll notice that I'm wearing purple. Purple is the colour of Lent. Would you pray with me? Loving and living God. Help us to use Lent to get rid of that old skin of ourselves. Help us to shed the things that make us selfish. Help us to shed those things which pull us away from you. Help us to shed those things which make us self-centred and arrogant and rude and difficult. So when Lent comes, boys and girls, be prepared to get rid of the things that you don't need to get closer to Jesus, to be better people. Shed that outer skin of your selfishness and your greed and let God fill the gaps. Let God come into your life through Jesus as he spent those 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, being tempted, but he did not give in to his temptation. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So may you have a good and holy Lent. Get closer to God. Get rid of the things you don't need. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all in our school, today and every day. Amen.